and welcome to this video. My name is Manya and today I will be showing you all of my vintage blouses. They are my most favorite thing to thrift. So I'm going to run through all of them starting from the oldest up to the newest most recent one. And I'll also tell you how you can actually recognize and date those kind of vintage blouses, especially the ones here in Europe, because that is where I thrift. I do thrift in the Netherlands and in Germany. Let's get started. This is my oldest blouse, which is from the 60s. With this blouse, it's first of all, very easy to recognize that it's vintage, because if you see the label, I'm gonna put it up here, it will actually tell you that it was made in West Germany. You already know when you have this label that it was made pre-1990. And then if you look at the style of this, it has the little polka dots and then the Peter Pan collar and this little bow tie, necktie. So this is very much a 60s blouse. Next, we're moving on to my largest and my most favorite category, which is the 70s. What is very common with 70s tags of clothes that are from Germany and also the Netherlands and maybe other countries, but those are the ones I have experienced with is that a lot of times here in the back, the label will only tell you the size and nothing else. This blouse actually has a few more labels, so it will tell you that it's 100% polyester and other things. But definitely if it's just the size and they also have the certain types of fonts, you will a lot of times know for sure when you see something like this that this was made in the 1970s. Next up is this really cool embroidered blouse. Those are actually the only two embroidered blouses I have and I wish I had more because I love this style so much. And yeah, same thing, this is from the 70s and this is actually made of cotton, which is very nice because a lot of 70s blouses and clothing is actually made from polyester. So whenever I find a cotton one that I like that fits me, I will always, always pick it up. When you look at this blouse, you will know right away that this was made in the 70s because of this collar. Very pointy collars, those dagger collars, disco collars were so in in the 1970s. This shirt also has the size with the kind of fun, the very small sizing tag. Another thing that also can show you that a piece of clothing is older, a lot of them actually do not have the um, garment care instructions but if they do you do have to see whether they have a dryer sign on there if they do not you will for sure know that it was made pre-90s if it does not have that logo on it another thing that was very common here in the 70s were those slight puff sleeved blouses that are cinched in here so this also has like the other one the ruffles here and a really cute ruffly collar and this one also has that sizing tag again. This blouse has the same thing going on, the puffy sleeves and it very cinched in here. It actually almost looks a little bit 80s, but if you look at the tag, it is a 70s tag. So it might be late 70s, I'm not sure. It definitely is 70s. And you can actually also wear it like this, but I have to say that I probably prefer wearing it just like this. This blouse, obviously also we're still in the 70s right now, has um, those sleeves again, you know, the ones that are just, well, these are actually not puffed, but they are cinched in here. And it has a contrasting stitch, which makes it look so cool also here in the breast pocket. And this actually is a zipper that you can open and close. This actually does have a care label here on the inside on the side, which is not that common for that time period, but Sometimes you have that and I think the reason why is because it's probably a higher quality garment because it does say in here that it is Swiss fabric. This blouse is very voluminous and when I saw it at first I wouldn't put it in the 80s category just because of that. But when you look at the label, it's another of those 70s sizing labels. So it is a 70s blouse. It might be late 70s because just because of the style, but it also has this very puffy sleeve, cinched in here, and really, really nice details with the eyelid. Here we have some more very typical 70s colors, and again, the cinched in slightly puffy sleeves. And this actually has a brand in it. It is called, well, if it's Dutch, it's called Bischot. If it's German, it's called Bischot. So who knows? I did pick it up in the Netherlands, but you have a lot of crossover when it comes to vintage between those two countries, so it might be either German or Dutch. We have come to the last blouse from the 70s. It's time to say goodbye to apparently my favorite decade of blouses ever. This one is another vertically striped one, which 
I honestly, I'm not sure whether that was a trend in the 70s, but I have three vertically striped blouses, so maybe that was a thing. This one is very light and airy, cotton one, and it also has the size tag I've been talking about throughout this whole video. <laughs> so yeah, really cute, and I picked this one up in the Netherlands. Welcome to the 80s, finally. Well, at least that's how I dated this blouse. It was quite hard because when you look at the care and garment instructions, of this item you will see that it has no dryer signs so i first wanted to place it in the 70s but i think it was more 80s style also because of the collar because usually a lot of the 70s clothes had really cool collars like the disco or dagger collar and the frilly collar so i think that this is probably early 80s this blouse is one of my favorite blouses also especially because i love the color and initially i think thought it was a 70s blouse because it has the cinched in sleeves, it has a little bit of a puffiness, and it has a pointy collar, but when I looked inside after purchasing it, I saw that somebody who owned it before had removed shoulder pads, and shoulder pads are just a very 80s and 90s thing, so I would assume that this blouse was probably from the early 80s since it had shoulder pads, but it also has some of the 70s things still going on plus it also is very oversized and you know oversized clothing was just a big big thing in the 80s this little sleeveless 80s blouse is something where i was debating whether it was 80s or maybe 90s but i believe that when i look at the tag it does look more 80s to me because it does look a little bit older and in the 90s you had I don't know, the tags just look a little bit more like they look today, but then not quite, if that makes sense. And this one is really cute. It actually has a very nice gingham pattern to it, which I really like. This is a satin shirt, likely from the 80s, maybe early 90s. It does have shoulder pads. They're very subtle, though. This is a really nice iridescent champagne colored shirt, kind of a satin light -like material. Very nice, and it has a very cool detailing of buttons that have a gold rim and the same color as the shirt in the middle. This 90s blouse is one of my most favorite finds from recent vintage years, so when it comes to 80s, 90s, because this is actually a shirt that is made of 100% silk and it is by a German designer called Joop, which if you are German you will probably know this brand. It's a very good one. And I actually got this in the Netherlands at a vintage kilo sale and since you pay by weight when you go to those sales, I probably didn't even pay more than two to three euros for this blouse, which is an amazing deal. It's silk, so it hardly weighs anything. This is another 90s blouse, which you might have guessed because we're in the 90s right now. I was actually looking for a vintage blouse, a white one for a while that has some little interesting details, but still looks very you know, sleek and not too out there. So I found this one and this one actually has some embroidery and the buttons are real mother of pearl which is very nice. The reason why I know it's 90s, well, it doesn't have any shoulder pads. It is oversized and also it has the tag in there, which is definitely an older tag and it does have the washing instructions when it comes to dryer. So that's when I knew that this blouse was made in the 90s. This is another 90s blouse, which it actually might be late 90s. The reason is it is a denim blouse but it has those studs here and some of them are rhinestones, which is actually not at all my style. You will usually not see me wearing any rhinestones, but I kind of like this detail for some reason. And yeah, same thing you can definitely see with the label. It's this kind of 90s label, the kind of label that shirt before that I showed you also has. If you like this video, make sure to check out these ones here on the side. And thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please do because I actually do post new videos about thrifting, vintage, and secondhand finds every single week. I will see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye!